for having me. All right, have a seat. Sure. Uh, Hello everybody, welcome to MNB World Talk Show. Today's guests have infused creativity and worldwide vision successfully in her business. She has been exporting Mongolian cashmere products with top-notch design to international markets. This beautiful, talented lady is founder of Seelin Cashmere brand, Miss Hodang Kantok. Thank you for receiving our invitation and to come into our studio. Thank you for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. So your background is banking and finance. Right. Why did you go into fashion industry? Well, I always, um, th there's been something in me that always wanted art. Like mm -hmm. when I was a little kid, um, I used to draw. Okay. And when I, was, so when I was six years old, I, I, I took the third place in the national competition of of drawing, of oh drawing, wow. and uh, I was a mm -hmm. violinist when I, uh, for five years up until when I was eleven, mm -hmm. and I used to play uh, play piano, and uh, I was a dancer. When I even <laughs> when I was uh, when I was taking the um, investments um, um, major, I used to I used to take acting class just as a side as, as a side so interest. There's <laughs> always been something craving for for art, art yes, and culture, right? Mm -hmm. So this art has been engraved to what I do now. The it's not just uh, a cashmere business. When, when people say you're in a cashmere business, some, um, my friends would ask me pr previously, before, mm -hmm. before um, what do you do? Do you export dehaired cashmere to China? Do mm -hmm. you export uh, what, uh, like uh, raw cashmere? Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not something like, uh, like that. When we produce products, especially garments, it takes a lot of effort, uh, not just by myself, but a whole group of team uh, artists, I would call them. Mm -hmm. My designer, my programmers, they're all artists. We produce products with such a detail that it has to be like an artwork. Mm -hmm. And when we, uh, when we present this, it has, it, ha it has to show what, it has to show our passion basically inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And <laughs> we have prepared a very short resume to show off. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's take a look at that. Well, from your resume, you have many uh, background in uh, business and finance and investment sector. Tell us about it. Um, I started off my career in um, City Smith Barney in Utah. Mm -hmm. It's part of Citibank. So I did my internship in Citibank before. And then um, I continued to, um, to take part as um, investment officer in ING Bank. Mm -hmm. At the time, it was the only foreign bank in Mongolia, and I was the only Mongolian in that foreign bank. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. And I was involved in trade financing for Petrovis, and uh, also we purchased uh, gov uh, Mongolian government bonds from the Mongolian Stock Exchange. And um, ING's first Asian sovereign bond uh, happened in Mongolia, so mm. I was involved in I was involved um, in, uh, in in I was involved in the project. I would say um, we issued the first uh, Mongolian sovereign bond within mm -hmm. ING Bank Asia out of Mongolia, and wow, I was part of the team. <laughs> you wrote history there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's how all my financing, um, f all this financing, uh, financing experience all started. And um, and then I w went ahead to do after uh, after I left ING Bank. Um, also, my business had even seal in Kashmir. I, I received investments also. Investment. Yes, on, on Seal and Kashmir, I was going to ask you about. So, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, Seal and Kashmir uh, was 
initiated unexpectedly. Very unexpectedly. Yeah, share the story. <laughs> so one time, um, one day my, my father called me and he said, um, Hulan, there's this American investor, he wants to invest in, he's looking in, into projects to invest. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's interested in Blue Sky Kashmir. And could you please help him? Because I think he wants to make a major investments and he just wants to have some um, double check on mm -hmm. what he's getting into. So. I, my purpose of, of uh, getting involved was just to help this person mm -hmm. that he gets the right information. So within two days, I collected all information about Kashmir, everything. Wait, 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 again, two, only two days? Within two days. I, okay. it, it took me and another, um, another um, my, actually my, my uh, relative, mm -hmm. both of us were involved in this. Mm -hmm. um, within two days, we collected all information regarding um, harvesting of cashmere, processing of cashmere, preparing yarn, the output percentage, who mm -hmm. sells what, what, which cashmere is best in, wi in which sector, you know. Within two days, we met so many people, collected so many information, and then pr produced some financial analysis for him. And he's not just a, just a, like an amateur m investor. He was mm -hmm. a real top-notch investor, and mm -hmm. he, uh, he had such, a, such an experience that he knows what he's getting into. Mm -hmm. So I think that made, made such an impression to him that he got back to me and he said, Are you, would you like to be involved in cashmere business? So I said, yeah, why not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he said, wow. How much cashmere can you can you prepare? And mm -hmm. then I called my sub, uh, my this lady who helped me mm -hmm. get all of this information as well. I got back to her and she said, and I spoke to her and asked her, um, if I were to harvest cashmere, can you help me? And if so, how much cashmere do you think we can harvest within uh, within this year? And she said, probably eight tons. So eight I, tons. Eight tons okay. of raw cashmere. So I. I spoke to my invest, uh, this potential investor, and I told him that I can uh, harvest eight tons. So he said, "Okay, give me your account, and I'll transfer the money." And with before signing the contract, he transferred me the first tranche of money. <laughs> wow, that's so, so unreal. Very unreal <laughs> and, and, and unexpected. The fact that you made that data analysis only in two days. That was I think that really gave him that trust. That gave yeah. him the trust, and also I really appreciate with mm -hmm. my uh, with ING Bank because they also gave me this experience on how to write a presentation, how to make financial analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, working with ING Bank for three years gave me this opportunity to present him within two days what I what I know mm -hmm. in in financial sector and and plus this cashmere, you know. <laughs> well, you you've established you had established the um, sin in cashmere, right? And what motivated you to go ahead and sell your products internationally, outside of Mongolia? I mean, it takes some guts. Right. To do business outside of Mongolia. So before Kashmir, mm -hmm. um, I tried producing children's clothing, but mm -hmm. uh, using wool because Kashmir I couldn't afford at the time. Mm -hmm. So I purchased, uh, I, I, I used to purchase a wool yarn and produce children's products and try to sell in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And I found that even even selling wool products, which is very cheap compared to Kashmir, um, at a very low price, people wouldn't buy it so much. Mm -hmm. It's not just the design, I think it's just the um, uh, the purchasing power in Mongolia wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. And um, Mongolia is also such a small market. We are only three million, right? And and o outside of Mongolia, there are so ma uh, there's so much uh, so mm -hmm. much opportunity and potential and uh, such there's a great market. Ocean of market. market, ocean of market Russia, there. China, <laughs> United States. Right, so that's how I started um, wholesales in overseas and uh, also the Tugurk was was devaluing at the time, so I wanted I wanted to bring U.S. dollar to Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, we've prepared some uh, video, short video about sealing Kashmir <laughs> today. Right. How's the production goes? Take a, let's take a look at that. here at our factory still in Kashmir um, so far um, this is the place where where we produce all of our collections uh, right now we're working on fall and winter collections um, so we 
what we do is we collaborate with a couple of designers. It can be international designers, some, some of them are Mongolian designers, but we all put our minds into, a, in, into producing a, an artwork. Um, so once we produce the, um, the designs, we send them to the knit, um, our knitting section. So our knitting section, they produce um, all the uh, product details. So all the product uh, details they produce and then send them to the linking department. The linking department then links all the pieces together and produce an, an, um, an end product. Once the end product is, is, is completed, we send them to the finishing department. The finishing department um, washes and cleans and irons and, and then basically checks all the quality and uh, they will set, set it ready for shipments. So on, once the products are finished, we send them to Ukraine. Um, they, we collaborate with uh, professional photographers in Ukraine and professional models. Uh, this year's collection photo shoots have already been taken place, and we will start. Um, we will start uh, present. We'll, we'll, we'll present them in July. By end of July, you'll be able to see all, all of our collections, and uh, we'll, we'll start selling for fall and winter by 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 end of July. And uh, in terms of marketing, we uh, we work together with uh, American and Israeli team at the moment, and um, the Israeli team uh, usually work on our, uh, on our websites, and then uh, the American team works on, our, on, our, um, uh, on uh, promoting the product itself. So all of our um, marketing team is outsourced, and our photo shoots and models are also outsourced. So you had mentioned about wholesale earlier. Mm -hmm. yes. Why wholesale and uh, what did you learn from wholesaling your products? So as I mentioned before, my background started as finance, uh, fi uh, in finance. So mm -hmm. I had to learn how to, pr how to produce a perfect product. Um, the, wholesale, the wholesale part of my business really developed, developed our, our brand. And uh, we've dealt with a lot of um, high-end designers, such as a designer uh, who used to work for Irmina Gildizina, Versace, mm -hmm. Laura Piana, Bruno Luguccinelli. She came to Mongolia in 2016 to work with us. Um, I'll talk about her later. And then mm -hmm. in, uh, in 2016, I met with another designer who used to produce for Jessica Simpson, and um, her company was also involved in producing products for Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. So she has a lot of extensive ex experience, I think more than 20 years in sweater designing. Mm -hmm. So these people really helped us in shaping, um, in shaping how we see cashmere in fashion design, you know. Mm. So uh, it's, it, the wholesale part is not just about producing something that randomly and then we just ship it. We have to get involved with, uh, with people who know how to produce perfect products, mm -hmm. how to produce perfect designs. So mm -hmm. from then we've learned so much, so much, um, uh, so much of, uh, of know-how, I would say, mm -hmm. to produce a, a, a nice top-notch design. Mm -hmm. Well, let's put the cashmere business aside. Okay. You're also an investor. Yeah. You've yeah. invested in Israeli high-tech <laughs> company. Right. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why did you invest in Israel but not in Mongolia? Well, this company... You could have invested that much money in Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's right? an exceptional case, I would say. Okay. It's an exceptional okay. case. Okay. Um, this company called Wise DSP, it's based in Israel, mm -hmm. um, run by, run by brilliant, brilliant scientists. They, this company holds over 40 patents in high tech. And among them, the most that I really liked was an acoustic sensor. This acoustic sensor that they've developed is, is, is the best in the world. Right now, the world's most, um, it's the world's best acoustic sensor um, can produce 78 decibels. Okay. But this acoustic sensor that I've invested, or this company that I invested, produced an acoustic sensor uh, that can produce 117 decibel. So 
this 117 decibel means that, for example, your uh, if you if you have um, a smartphone, mm -hmm. I would say it has anywhere between three to five acoustic sensors in that cell phone. Mm -hmm. Amazon Echo, you know this Alexa mm -hmm. thing, it has seven acoustic sensors. So all these high, uh, all cell phones and high-tech products, they use acoustic sensor. And even we can use a LED television, the re remote controller, without using this LED light, we can use acoustic sensor. So this product can sell and can be used in everything, basically. Has and it been used already in any technology it has that we know of in, uh, in worldwide? Right now, it's, it's um, right now the prototype sample is almost finishing, and okay. they will start presenting it to, to high-tech companies like Amazon, Google, um, mm -hmm. Apple, and Samsung, and all well those it sounds products. like as the AI technology uh, develops, right. it will uh, also need that acoustic sensors. Right. Mm -hmm. So wow. it's, it's a, it's a startup company. Very visionary <laughs> <laughs> investment. Huh? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's something that I cannot find in Mongolia at the, at the moment, hopefully in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, this is something that, I re uh, that really got my interest and I, I immediately wanted to invest in the company just to see how it grows. Mm -hmm. And if it, if it grows very well, then I get my share. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. We've talked about uh, the business side, mm. your work. Right. Let's talk about you as a person who's within you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as a, what was your childhood dream? I mean, who did you want to be? So, my childhood dream was, it was always been, um, as I mentioned before, like I, I loved art. Um, apart from art, I wanted to major. I, w I wanted to become an actress as a, as a child. Mm -hmm. And even when I did my uh, investments and finance major, I took acting classes at the time. Mm -hmm. So people would say, "You're a finance major. Why would you take acting <laughs> classes? You know, <laughs> like it's such a random, yes, it's random right. choice." Mm -hmm. And then I said, "Well, I wanted to give it a try and wanted to uh, w wanted to test myself if I can do it or not. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I." People would ask me, why didn't you choose acting at the time? Well, my, my father is a scientist. My grandfather was a scientist. So mm -hmm. my parents always said, no, 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 you're not an art. Uh, you, you're more of a science person, more, more mm -hmm. of a math person mm -hmm. than, a sci uh, than an art person. So I went ahead with my parents' decision, parents' choice, I, which I do not regret. W of course, everything that I've did so far up until now is because I've chose that path. Mm -hmm. but. I would like to now test myself if I can also be involved in, in acting, you know. Oh, so wow, <laughs> the dream is still alive. I, still, I mm -hmm. still have that dream. So one way or another, I will be involved in, in some sort of short film or long film, I don't know. But mm -hmm. before, <laughs> before I turn 50, I think I'll appear at least one short film or one, one long film. It doesn't matter wow, which one. Wow, <laughs> very nice. We might help you on that, the <laughs> MNB World team, okay? Thank you. <laughs> I took your word on that. <laughs> okay. So when we were studying about your background, mm -hmm. you've had uh, many occasions that you did humanitarian job. You yeah. helped children. <coughs> Why do you help children? What's <laughs> in it for you? I'm a mother of three children of myself, and it's just in me that I love kids. I love children and I, I cannot see them suffering for some reason. It's, uh, it's such heartbreaking just to see a sick kid or a child being abused. And uh, mm -hmm. it, that's why I was involved in a couple of projects involving children specifically. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you why in our society do we need or shall we do humanitarian work? I think it's absolutely necessary if you're... Why? I always thought, if we take, we have to give back. For example, I'm in, in the cashmere business. I, I, I produce products in Mongolia. I, I sell and I take, basically, right, from Mongolia, this cashmere I take. Mm -hmm. And I make my success based on cashmere sector. But if, I, if, I'm, if I'm in this business and if I, if I am successful, I always think that certain amount I have to give back. Mm -hmm. It's a balance always. So mm -hmm. our our brand, we always um, we all uh, we've been always investing ten percent of I mean giving back like mm -hmm. uh, donate donating ten percent of our income mm -hmm. to something that supports children. Mm 
Mm -hmm. For example, in the past we've, uh, we've um, donated money for uh, children who had very badly, who, who were ba badly burned mm -hmm. and whose life was, a, in, was in threat. And it was a long story short, this kid had a third degree burn. He had to fly to Korea to get this uh, treatment, otherwise his l life was basically in danger. Uh, in very, in very critical danger. So he survived and he came back home. And it's not just me; it was a lot of people involved, a lot of mothers. But uh, it, 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 we were involved in part of it, and mm -hmm. we were able to raise money for it also, mm -hmm. apart uh, apart from Silum Kashmir. So it's it's like a spiritual <laughs> karma. It's uh, yes, I would say <laughs> it's, uh, more of like social responsibility and uh, yes, like <laughs> my passion for 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 saving kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we've also prepared a, a video about mm -hmm. you being involved in uh, helping athletes in wheelchair. Right. Right. Let's have a look. together at the wheelchair fencing club um, as you can see we have some athletes here who are uh, physically disabled so in Mongolia there are 103 and a half thousand people who are disabled and out of that 20,000 of them are physically disabled and uh, by having this wheelchair fencing club which was which was um, initiated by uh, fencing Association of Mongolia and the GCI progress that uh, we would like to uh, pro we would like to uh, give these people an opportunity um, to have a bigger dream to accomplish something out of this. So the purpose of this project, the purpose of this project, is to create awareness in our society um, of people with disabilities um, concerning their rights and potential. We hope that uh, this practice and uh, this games that we are currently holding in in, in UB will help them uh, participate in 2020 Paralympic Games in Tokyo. Uh, and also, apart from that, it's going to help, it will help these athletes to, um, to have a better, uh, to have a frequent physical activity. It will help their uh, wellness, it will promote their health. By being, being involved in this project, I do feel that uh, it is my duty to be part of, uh, to be part of this social, social awareness program. And uh, as, a, as a citizen, I want to make an impact for those people, uh, for those people who are disabled and disadvantaged physically. And uh, hopefully that uh, in the future, we'll have more programs organized, not just only by GCA Progress, but hopefully by other NGOs, by other organizations, by government agencies, to have more awareness in this program, to promote uh, awareness and to help finance um, to be involved in and, and help those people who are disadvantaged in the future. So I, we really hope that this, this uh, uh, wheelchair fencing will have an impact to our society in general. Okay, Khodlan, are you a good mother? Yes, I think so. <laughs> you I, think so? I, I, ho I hope I am. <laughs> you hope? <laughs> yes, I'd like to think I am. <laughs> what is your biggest concern in raising children in today's society? My biggest concern is safety. And by safety, I mean um, when my children go out, they wouldn't have to worry about child abduction. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have to worry about physical endangerments. They wouldn't have to think about thieves and thefts and, and mm -hmm. um, anything that, that threatens them like as it is today. Mm -hmm. And also safety means uh, food safety, water safety, air safety. Mm -hmm. I, would like, I would like this world, not just Mongolia, but this world to be more um, food conscious, mm -hmm. water conscious, and, and air, uh, 
and the air conscious, basically. Whatever we do, whatever we eat, whatever we make should not affect our environment and air mm -hmm. and, of course, the safety of the children in terms of physical safety. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. <laughs> that's the outside, our environment. Right. What is the hardest part of raising children? <laughs> 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 the hardest part of uh, raising, a, uh, raising any child, I think, is, is to train them to become self-reliant. Mm. A child has to be self-reliant. Self they need to learn how to wear clothes themselves as, as a young child. They need to eat how to, how, they need to learn how to eat properly. They need to um, do their homework without asking me to, tell, uh, without uh, having me to tell them to do their mm. homework. You know, mm. they have to be self-reliant. So when they grow up, they can become an independent, um, independent and, um, I mean, with uh, someone with high self-esteem, I would assume. Mm -hmm. So this is my major goal to raise a child. They have to be self-reliant. Mm -hmm. Well, we are Mongolians. <laughs> are you proud Mongolian? I am a very proud Mongolian. Mm -hmm. I am so happy that I was born here because it's, it's a small country with huge opportunities. And uh, every, opportunity, every opportunity that I come across, to, I, try to, I try to have a grasp of it. <laughs> okay. Yes. What is... Uh, what is the th one thing, if I ask you, to change in our in Mongolia today? What would that be? Just name one thing that we should change, or that you think we should change. We should we should change the educational system. I, I think because if we educate, uh, if we put so much effort into educating the children. Mm -hmm. They will grow, grow up as an educated citizen. Mm -hmm. An educated citizen will will work mm -hmm. hard to to bring a, uh, to live better. Basically, mm -hmm. uh, I think we can also save poverty based on good education. We can sa save the environment based on good education. We can save the air the air pollution based on good education. So, the co the main core is to is to develop the educational system in Mongolia. What is wrong with today's education system? I don't think the educational system is good enough here. The the teachers need to be more. I mean, I'm not saying all. Mm -hmm. Just uh, in some parts of Mongolia, mm -hmm. um, the teachers need to be trained more. There needs to be more school, more uh, kindergarten, um, so that every every child has an opportunity to attend school. And we need we need more exposure to the outside of Mongolia. Also, not just ev everything. Everything that we learn has to be. Mongolia and mm -hmm. plus the outside world, uh -huh. so that we can become an international person in the future. Global citizens. Global citizens. So our education <laughs> needs to prepare global citizens. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's been a pleasure thank you sharing so much. your experience with our audience. <laughs> thank you so I much. I wish you good luck and good health for your future endeavors. You too. Thank you. Well, this has been the founder of Sealand Kashmir brand, Ms. Hodan Gansok. Thank you for staying with us. Hope you enjoyed our conversation. Goodbye until next week. <laughs>